and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Noxus Peak. That's right, we're going to be playing some Targon's Peak with Noxus. So, of course, you know this landmark, 5 mana, round start, reduce a random card in each player's hand to cost 0 this round. So we're going to want to be able to play this and then have some very powerful big effects that we make cost 0 um, in order to take full advantage of that. But first, before we get there, let's kind of take a look at our, our deck. Early game, we're going to be having Zoe along with Aurelian Soul in this deck. And basically what Zoe's job is, is to slow the opponent down, right? Like it's a one mana, one one elusive that's really good that the opponent's going to have to be like spending removal spells on it and everything like that. Well, it's just a one mana card. And so like while they're worrying about our Zoe, we're just kind of going towards our Targon's peak. So that's its job. And then besides that, we have like House Spider and Shield Bear, which, which are great blockers. Culling Strike for some removal. And then we have two 5 fours. We have Reckless Trifarian, the Camp Block, and the Solari Sunforger, the Daybreak against Lifesteal. So these two uh, big 5 fours, And those things are important because we are also going to be playing Reckoning. And I know Reckoning can kill our Zoe, but like I said, our Zoe is just kind of, um, you know, distraction for the opponent more than anything else. And, you know, can do some stuff with like the uh, Celestials and everything like that. So we'll have uh, Reckoning to slow down the aggro decks with, uh, with paired, paired with the Reckless Trifarian and the Sol Solari Sunforger. And then we keep going. We got like some removal of Sunburst. And then we have our top end. Eclipse Dragon makes even more Celestials for us. Star Shaping, also kind of part of our top end, making some good expensive Celestials. So both those make good expensive Celestials, which are great with Targon's Peak. You have Captain Farron creating a whole bunch of Decimates. Captain Farron ends the game very quickly, and then if we get zero mana decimates, that can also help out uh, as far as ending the game fast. An infinite mind splitter, and then the big top end, three Aurelian Soul, three Skies Descend. Both of those are amazing with Targon's Peak, especially Skies Descend. So we'll have like one mana Ruination, basically dealing 15 to all their stuff. That could be awesome. So we have like Reckoning to be able to clear out aggro. We have Skies Descend to pair with Targon's Peak. Um, and we have good late game with Eclipse Dragon and Star Shaping and all that kind of stuff. And we can annoy them in the early game with Zoe. So it looks pretty cool. So that's going to be our meme tier deck going with Noxus Peak. So we'll try it out in normal. We're going to be playing five games here and let's see how they do. All right, looks like we're playing against an all in Fiora deck. So against an all in Fiora deck. I actually just want, um, I guess, barrier cards. Barrier cards stop the skies descend. I really just want the Targon's Peak, and then expensive stuff. I don't want to play like these units, like like House Spider or something. I definitely do not want to play at all because it just allows them to kill multiple things. I don't want that to happen. Oh, should I play Zoe? I guess I could play Zoe. That will give them one Fiora kill. I guess that's okay. Yeah, so channel point prediction's up. Yeah, Fiora kills Zoe, but we get the super cool star chart. Because the Fiora needs four kills before they kill us, so we'll give them one with the, the Zoe. Sunburst should be pretty good. I, no, I, I really like House Spider. I think House Spider is going to be really important for a deck, but this just isn't, you know, this just is not the House Spider matchup, right? Like, I, I don't want to play Shield Bear or House Spider or anything like that. But I, I really like having the House Spiders. Um, Moon Silver or Messenger? Moon Silver, like, makes our Eclipse Dragon a lot better because we get to Moon Silver into Eclipse Dragon, like, this next turn. 
Um, but Messenger would help us find, like, Targon's Peak, but we're not really that great on Targon's Peak anyway, so I'm, I'll take this Moon Silver. So it looks like they are struggling to find another Fiora, and yeah, they so they they had the one Fiora. But Sunburst is kind of perfect against this deck, right? Because it silences, and then, so, like, they can't go Barrier, they can't do anything. And so they only had the one Fiora. We sunburst it. That's that's the game. Yeah, that, that's what that deck does. It's just that deck is completely all in on Fiora, and it's just kind of dead, <clears throat> kind of dead to sunburst because none of the stuff that they want to um, none of the stuff they they want to use to protect Fiora works. And so they have three entreat, three Fiora. And it's only six cards that matter, and we killed one, and they didn't have one of the other five. They forced us to choose death or the blade. All right, so death or the blade. Um. Out of the way. That's not what I was expecting. So I last turn they passed, I passed because of Diana. I didn't want, like, I think they were thinking, like, maybe I play something and they go dust Diana. Um, I'm not really that close to reckoning right now. So I do have the ability to play Targon's Peak this turn, but I don't have anything that good for Targon's Peak. TBH. I'll still use that right now so I don't just completely pass the turn if they do you know if they pass to me. But I don't I don't have to like cast it. Um Alright, so I Equinox and silence that. Or I just go Trickster and block it. I kind of think maybe I just go Trickster and block it. <clears throat> I take two, but it's gone. Sleepy trouble bubble. By the moon's crescent blade, the moon is our queen, up. the night, her kingdom. No, calling calling strikes to. That's too risky, trying to Culling Strike a Diana. With them being able to play another Diana fairly easily. Okay, never mind. I am not leveling up the Zoe. But the Zoe will be able to play some defense.
So do I kill Nocturne or kill Diana? I guess I'm, I guess I maybe have to kill the Nocturne. I think I do have to kill the Nocturne. I probably should have played two cards first in it before attacking them and before making this this thing. Yeah, I, I should have attacked. I should have done these two things first. I was a little. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why I was scared of Lunari Dustbringer. I, I should have done some other stuff first before attacking. Because then zero mana behold the infinite would be much, much stronger, especially with the Targon. Oh, come on, really? Rekindler? Okay, well I was I was still feeling okay about this before Rekindler. Zero mana rekindler. Thanks, Targon's Peak. Yeah, unfortunately, the Targon Speak just really helped my opponent much more than me. I will be heard. That is, of course, very great for me. No, 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 do that, do that, do that. Come on. No, go back. Challenge that. Yes. Face your heretic. Uh, I, I'm still, like, really dead anyway. Doesn't really matter. All right, but they, I mean, they did a great job of, of having their champions, right? They had three Nocturnes and a Diana. Jeez. I mean, you can't really just say Zoe ruins this deck whenever we had a game where our out of our first five cards, three of them were Zoe. That's, you know, like that's obviously not going to be something that we're going to want. The sleepy trouble. I mean, even like the other two Zoes, though, being the sleepy trouble bubbles, those were like better two of our better cards because they were actually killing their champions. But you know, like that's that's kind of short sighted just to look at one game where we didn't draw any top end and just had all Zoes and then other like two and three drops and then just say that Zoe ruined the deck. That's. That's just uh, much too small of a sample. <laughs> yeah, so this this hand is just all uh, Targon speaks, I guess. I don't think Zoe ruined that that game. Like I said, the the cards that were good in our hand were those sleepy trouble bubbles. What ruined our game was like the the three mana five four that can't block and the reckoning that couldn't do anything. Those are the cards that did nothing. That we couldn't like those were the cards that we just couldn't play because they they did nothing. The Zoe was doing stuff, and also the Sleepy Trouble Bubble was killing champions. Join the glorious evolution. All right, maybe I shouldn't take the Cosmic Rays. I wasn't sure what to what to do with those. Um, but I don't behold another Celestial card. Can you improve perfection? But as you can see, it looks like a pretty tasty Cosmic Rays. As long as... yeah. So I, maybe the Cosmic Rays is good. As long as they don't kill us right away. We are going to be doing some crazy stuff. Can you improve 
Perfection. Yeah, this is a Targon Speak Hand for sure. This is a Targon Speak Hand. Yeah, I would I would have blocked Victor for sure. Yeah, I I'm throwing away like these things don't matter. Okay, so we can play zero mana Captain Farron, but I think that's a, I think that that is bad for us. Kind of question mark. Because, so, Captain Farron makes a whole bunch of Decimates in hand, and I don't really want these Targon Speaks hitting the Decimates, right? Like, what, what really matters is Skies Descend, and then, you know, like, a Rillian Soul Skies Descend, that kind of stuff. So, is it worth getting putting three Decimates in hand where, like, that just makes our Targon Speaks much worse? Makes it harder for, Sky, for me to hit Skies Descend? Alright, well, Chad is saying that I should be playing it. Alright, so... We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and play it. Why would I not play it? Because I don't. Because I want I want Targon's Peak to hit Skies Descend this next turn, and I don't want it to hit like all these Decimates, right? Like so, instead of it being like having two two chances of one out of five each, now we have two chances of one out of eight, and so it's a much worse chance for us hitting that. Right, I'm gonna have them waste their mana. Okay, well we still we still hit the skies ascend, so we still we still hit the one out of eight, so we're lucky. You can definitely pass up a zero mana, Captain Farron. Whenever like everything's gonna be costing zero anyway, like with these Targon peaks. But we we got lucky. We got we hit the skies ascend, so everything's good now. Let me just do this first. Let's rock. So, open attack could have maybe done 13, depending on what they had. But I felt like playing an Aurelian Soul is better than that. The Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Still putting in work. There we go. Alright, so Targon's Peak, pretty good with the Skies Descend. That's, you know, obviously well when the Skies Descend, pretty amazing. Oh no! Oh no, we're, we're facing a Targon's Peak Mirror. That means our Targon's Peak may be better, you know, like it may help them out. And theirs may help us out. Yeah, really in Soul Skies Ascend, those are definitely the most important cards. My faith protects me. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna get some aggro going on here though. We'll play we'll play this uh, Shield Bear on two, Triparian on three. Get some beat down going on. Cause they could feel the rush and get two ten tens, but then I could Skies Ascend and deal fifteen to them.
Like, we got some good aggro. That was 40% of their life total there on turn three. Not bad, not bad. Ooh, House Spider, though, very bad. Shining gifts from the sky. All right, come on, hit Skies Descend. Two out of five. Now. Scorching light. Okay, so they're spending their mana on that. Spending mana on that. And that was the zero mana card. So I can spend mana on that. Should have done all of that before attacking. No! You hit my Targon's Peak like the worst thing to hit. Why can't you hit my Skies Descend? I guess I just pass, see what they do, because they gotta do something first. Behold my work. Alright, what do we got? So that puts them up to 20, and we are attacking for 22, which is more than 20. And there we go. So I didn't get to do anything super cool, but we will take it. Alright, so that was going to be weird, you know, is it going to be whose who's Targon's Peak was better? Some Heimer Zoe. No, not another Sky's Descent. <clears throat> I wanted a Targon Speak. I will take it. Cause I got a super cool star chart now. Yes, Targon Peak. Alright. I get a super cool star chart out of it. And maybe a zero mana challenger. Not a zero mana challenger. I really hope they don't have Aftershock, right? Like, if they have Aftershock that blows up my Targon's Peak, this is going to be very sad. Hopefully not. We want to get rid of all these two drops. <clears throat> so our Targon's Peak doesn't hit him. I don't know why I didn't just attack immediately. I should have attacked immediately first. But they're passing. Never mind. I just wasted eight mana. Looking into the future, I see purple. Yeah, like, how did they not play anything last turn? I guess they were expecting me to attack. Mm. Weapons golden as the dawn. Gold floating crystals. Whee! Nope. 
don't care. All those things are dying. They're all dead. They're all dead. I could probably I could probably just cast like the star shaping first and pass priority to them. And then like Eclipse Dragon pass priority to them and then Skies Descend. But it's just so much fun playing that card that I just, just kind of played it right away. Mystical levitation requires concentration. Yeah, they're gonna have a lot of gems. That's gonna make it difficult to draw cards. <laughs> the Hand of Pale Cascade. Yeah, I guess they they realized they just can't, I, I think they didn't block cause they didn't want to <clears throat> risk not having any um any space for drawing new cards. Cuz if they blocked they would their hand would be filled with gems. That'd be my guess. Man, Targon's Peak is silly. And that's it. It's another 4-1 on Meme Tier Day. Man, we got some pretty sweet Meme Tier decks today. Crazy games. Crazy fast games, too. That's the thing. Like, you want to play some, some Targon's Peak, you get some fast games. Like, <laughs> like this is how you speed up uh, Targon, right? Like, if you want to play Targon decks and you want to play Celestials and stuff, but you don't want to play 30-minute games, just play Targon's Peak. Because <laughs> there you go. That That's the way to do it. Because then Targon's Peak uh, just allows you to unload your hand with these Celestials super fast, and they just end the game uh, really quickly. So, yeah, we ended up going 4 and 1. Um, yeah, the Peak didn't do much of the first game. We had too many cheap cards in hand, absolutely. But I don't think it was Zoe's fault, even though we had the three Zoe's, because Zoe... Zoe was like the only card that we were playing and we were playing like the other stuff. It was really like the the fault of the other cards in hand more than Zoe. Um you know, it was like, you know, the Trifarian they couldn't block, the reckoning like all that kind of stuff. Um yeah, we didn't we didn't yeah, he said that we didn't get uh reckoning for full board unfortunately, but that's true. So yeah, we didn't get to do too much cool stuff with Reckoning, even though you know, like we had the Trifarian Sunforger Reckoning combo that we were trying to do. But honestly, it, it's just it's just Skies Descent, right? Like that's that's the card, right? Like you just play Targon Speak Skies Descent. Like that is the real deal. Like that is not easy for it's it's not easy for like decks to kill you before turn six, and it is kind of easy to have Targon Speak plus Skies Descent. <laughs> that's that is the real deal for sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so, like, you know, just, like, having that kind of stuff, very good. And then, you know, like, your Zoe just kind of annoys them to begin with. Pretty cool little deck here. You have your Captain Farron creating all those Decimates, burn them out like we did on game number four. The Trifarian was also great on game number four with how they were a ramp deck and just playing the three mana 5-4. That was just really big, and they couldn't really deal with it. The Culling Strikes were good removal. We got to kill a lot of things with Culling Strikes, you know, maybe like a Victor and, and a Zoe and stuff like that. Like So the Culling Strike was good removal. And and uh, we didn't need it too much, but if we played... Because we didn't play against like too much like fast aggro, but if we play against those fast aggros, those House Spiders are just amazing at blocking. All right, so that's it. That's it. That's Nox's Peak. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube... Hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. Hope you, hopefully, y'all enjoyed the deck. If you try it out yourself, let me know how it goes. 
I'm uh, interested to hear how you do with the Noxus Peak deck yourself. But that's all I got here for Noxus Peak, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.